You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. So we're uh, next going to be joined on the uh, telephone. We're going to be talking all about National Nest Box Week. Firstly, thank you very much for joining us. If you could just introduce yourself and uh, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and your organisation. Uh, Paul Stancliffe from the British Trust for Ornithology. Um, I'm the media manager here at the BTO. I've been here for 11 years and um, it's my job to make sure that the work that the Trust does... Um, it gets out to a wider audience. And um, this interview is just part of that. We're a scientific research organisation. We have about 100 staff based in Thetford, uh, right in the middle of East Anglia, um, most of which are scientists. Um, but the lifeblood of the BTO are its volunteers. We have about 60,000 volunteers, uh, citizen scientists, that go out on a weekly basis, uh, collect data for the BTO and submit their observations to us that allow our scientists to do the number crunching um, that then can be used to inform government, uh, industry and anybody who wants uh, information that can help conserve Britain's birds. Which is pretty amazing and uh, sort of a, a, almost a, what I'd say, a hidden infrastructure that probably most people don't realise is going on. No, absolutely. We're often referred to as um, the best kept secret in ornithology. Um, we have, we're a membership organisation. We have 19,000 members um, that support the BTO annually. And, um, you know, compare that with the RSPB, which is a much better known organisation. They have a million members. Um, but the difference is we're a scientific research organisation, whereas the RSPB are very much a campaigning organisation and an organisation that buys up land to conserve birds. We produce all the trends and the status of Britain's birds. Um, it's not that we work in isolation. We uh, work in partnership with organisations like RSPB and others. Um, but we still are a, a very well-kept secret. So tell our listeners all about National ne Nest Box Week. The 14th of February uh, this year, we'll see uh, the start of the 21st annual National Nest Box Week. Um, it's a week in which we, uh, the BTO, encourage people to put up nest boxes for our birds. Uh, many of our birds are showing alarming decline. Some of our most familiar birds, like the starling and the house sparrow, have declined by uh, the house sparrow getting on for nearly three quarters of them have gone in the last 25 years. And about two-thirds of our starlings have disappeared in over the same time period. And there are many reasons as to why these birds are declining. But one of the contributing factors uh, for both of those species is loss of nesting space. Uh, we're making our homes ever more energy efficient. We're blocking up all the little nooks and crannies and hole, holes in which uh, heat might escape. Uh, and quite rightly, we should be. Um, but in doing so, we're blocking out birds like starlings and house sparrows that use that space for nesting. But we can do something about it. We can put up a nest box, um, and both of them readily take to nest boxes. The house sparrow with a 32 millimeter entrance hole to the nest box, and starling with a 45 millimeter entrance hole. Um, but there are many other species that use nest boxes, and we encourage people to put as many up as they can. And uh, is there a particular height that they need to be? So, the, I mean, there are some guidelines around nest boxes. Um, but there are no hard and fast rules. I mean, we always recommend that a nest box faces east or northeast. Um, in this country, most of our prevailing weather comes from the west. And so we, uh, by facing them east or northeast, they're out of the worst of the weather. And also, they're out of direct sunlight for the biggest part of the day. But in a nest box in direct sunlight, there's a bit of a no-no um, because you can overheat the contents inside. Um, as far as height goes... Um, you've got to think about the location you're putting a box, whether it will be easily accessible to predators like cats, for instance, in gardens. Um, but, you know, really, you can put a nest box at any height. Robins use open-fronted nest boxes, like a little letterbox-type nest box, and they'll, they'll nest, you know, um, a foot off the ground. 
Whereas other birds like house sparrows, if you can put the nest box as high as you can on your house, um, they'll favour that. So, but having said that, birds will, you know, you put a nest box up and it'll look like it's in a location that's terrible and they may still use it. And I suppose they don't always necessarily nest in it. It could be they're just using it for shelter initially. Well, that's a very, very good good uh, point. So um, we encourage people to put up nest boxes um, starting the 14th of February, um, Valentine's Day. This is when birds are starting to pair up and look for prospective nest sites. Um, but birds will use nest boxes throughout the year. They will use them for the breeding season from around about mid-March through till kind of the mid-summer. Um, but in the winter, they'll use them for roosting sites. Now, blue tits and great tits, the uh, two species that most commonly use nest boxes, will roost singly in a nest box during the winter. So they'll choose a box and they'll go in there and they'll be the only bird in there. Um, but it, it's fantastic because it keeps them out of the cold uh, and the worst of the weather. Was there anything else you'd like to cover or get over to our listeners that we've not, not covered yet? Um, I think I think one of the, the great things about nest boxes is you don't need a very big space to um, to erect one. Um, even the smallest garden has room for a nest box. And even if you don't have a garden, you can put a house sparrow box um, up on your house. Um, say house sparrows, the very name suggests that they, they will nest very close to us. And they uh, often nest under the eaves of houses. So a nest box high up under the eaves is ideal for house sparrow. Um, and if you've got a larger garden, you can put up several nest boxes because some birds like the blue tit, they will um, choose a mate and then go prospecting. So they might put a bit of nest material in two or three different nest boxes. And then right at the beginning of the breeding season, when they're deciding to settle down, choose one that suits them. And um, so the more nest boxes you've got, the better chance you've got of providing that um, you know, family of blue, uh, blue tits a home. Uh, but there's space for a nest box for everyone. So if our listeners would like to find out more information, are there any websites they can look at? Uh, for, for information on the different types of nest boxes, um, if you want to make a nest box or where to buy nest boxes, and particularly uh, which species use them and how to install your nest box, the BTO website has some very good information. So that's uh, bto.org. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time out to uh, talk to our listeners and tell them uh, all about the uh, National Next Box uh, Week. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure.